welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your weekly home for all things related to helping you on your journey to find that amazing job. Each week I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading recruiters, authors, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had a decade ago when I graduated. For episode 65 of the Graduate Job Podcast, I'm joined by Jane Fordham from the award-winning communications agency Golin. Now, you might not have heard about Golin, but just you wait till you hear about some of their amazing internships and the innovative schemes that they have on offer. In this half hour, we explore their brilliant unturnship. Yes, you heard that right, the unturnship, which involves three months of paid travel around the world. Yep, three months not working, but travelling. We cover the firm more widely and what it is that they look for as a PR, creative and communications agency and how to get yourself a graduate job there after university. We delve into their internships more generally, how you can apply, stand out and impress throughout the process. If you've ever thought about working or applying for a comms or communications agency, then this is the episode for you. And if that thought has never crossed your mind, keep listening is you're going to want to apply when you hear more about Golin and what they offer. As always, all links to everything we discuss and a full transcript are available in the show notes right this very moment at graduatejobpodcast.com slash Golin. Before we start though, a quick message from today's sponsor who are the National Graduate Recruitment Exhibitions. If you're searching for the perfect graduate career, get yourself down to the National Graduate Recruitment Exhibitions on the 13th and 14th of October at Olympia in London, and on the 3rd and 4th of November at the NEC in Birmingham. You'll be able to meet some of the UK's leading graduate recruiters face-to-face, such as Tesla, BAE Systems, BT, Network Rail, TK Maxx, Marriott Hotel, Royal Mail, Ofcom, and many, many more. Discover what opportunities they have to offer, how to apply, and what will make you stand out from the crowd. Whether you have a clear idea of your career aspirations, or you aren't sure which path to take yet, this show will help you sail through the graduate recruitment process. As well as over 80 of the top graduate recruiters, highlights include one-to-one feedback at a mock assessment centre to make sure you are fully prepared for the real thing, expert career guidance at the advice clinic, interactive skills for business workshops to help equip you with the tools needed to make a difference in any workplace from day one, inspiring and informative industry presentations from leading companies such as Whitbread, BP, Thomson Reuters, DWF Law and DSTL. And win the chance to fast track your way through the recruitment process with a golden ticket competition. And the best bit about the exhibition is that it's free. Don't miss out. Visit the National Graduate Recruitment Exhibitions on the 13th and 14th of October at Olympia in London and on the 3rd and 4th of November at the NEC in Birmingham. Head on over to get your free ticket now at gradjobs.co.uk that's gradjobs.co.uk. Now on with the show. I'm very excited to welcome to the podcast today Jane Fordham, Executive Director for Marketing and Talent at Goal in London, the innovative and multi-award winning communications agency. Jane, welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Thank you very much. What a wonderful introduction. Ah, thank you. And when I said a multi-award winning, I wasn't lying. So Golin have been <laughs> named Agency of the Year for six years running. Very impressive. Thank you. It's uh, Yes, it's it's a, a wonderful accolade to, to have. And would you like to maybe give us a brief introduction at the beginning to, to Golin and what you do as a firm and then, then your role as Executive Director for Marketing and Talent? Certainly, James. Um, so I've been at the company 14 years now, actually, have celebrated it a few days ago. And uh, Golin is a, an international um, communications agency headquartered in Chicago, um, part of the Interpublic or IPG group. We um, have been uh, around for a little over 60 years, so uh, relatively long in the tooth for, for our industry. Um, and we very much grew out of a public relations or earned media um, background. Very proud of that heritage, and that's still um, a part of the business that's, that's very important and central to us. 
However, um, clearly the world has changed a great deal over those 60 years. So have our clients um, and so is our vision. So um, today we very deliberately call ourselves a communications rather than a PR agency. And um, without getting caught up in a endless um, discussion on, on semantics uh, around our industry and so on, essentially that means that we are passionate about the, the insights and the creative platform that meets our clients' objectives. And then we will help them to deliver um, on the KPIs and to deliver campaigns through multiple channels. So it might be um, through earned media or PR. It could be through uh, paid media. Um, it could be through content. It could be through social, digital means um, or traditional media. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little flavor of, of who we are and, and what we're about. Excellent. And you mentioned um, headquartered in uh, Chicago over in the States. How many other countries around the world do you uh, operate in? Because we've got listeners all over the place. We are uh, more than we have more than 50 offices around the world. So uh, fairly significant amount of dots on maps. Um, so we have a, a really healthy presence in, in all five continents. And uh, we're very proud that a lot of our work is, is cross border uh, or international. Um, there are clients and campaigns that are, are purely local in terms of strategy and execution. Uh, and then there are those at the opposite end of the spectrum that uh, uh, encompass many, many markets, um, each of which provide different opportunities uh, and, and challenges. Oh, brilliant. So listeners, no matter where you're listening to this, there'll be a goal in <laughs> nearby you can, uh, you can check out. So, Jane, I have to admit my uh, my ignorance. Before um, I spoke to my recent uh, guest, Sarah Stimson, I'd not heard of uh, Golden, yeah. and uh, okay. but she was she was telling me about the amazing internship opportunities with the uninternship and Golden B and B, and you know your approach to helping to tackle the cost of living in London. And I knew I just had to get you on the <laughs> show. So maybe if we we start with them before moving on to thinking about applying for graduate jobs with Golden more generally. So maybe starting sure. with the uninternship, could you give listeners a, a flavour of just how exciting this is? Absolutely, and a big thank you to uh, to Sarah Stimson for uh, for sending you in our direction. Um, so yes, talent is very very important to us, of course, as a as a creative industry. And our um, chairman, and until uh, last year, our, our CEO, the inimitable uh, Fred Cook, um, has always been a real uh, passionate advocate of um, innovative ways to to, um, to find and retain the, the best uh, talent. We're also, as a firm, very, very genuinely committed to diversity, and that's not just because it's the right thing to do, but actually, as a creative industry, cognitive diversity um, clearly has direct um, impact on our client campaign and our client bottom line. How can we possibly market effectively on behalf of our clients unless we're representative of our clients and, and their consumers. Yeah. So the um the unturnship was born um sadly I can't claim it was it came from these shores. It came from, from the US um and uh from Fred Cook who um had quite an unconventional career path himself, especially for US CEO. Um it came from one of his MDs saying, you know what, Fred if your CV, if your resume passed my um, desk now, even now, um, I probably wouldn't invite you in for an interview. So that's a you know, shocking uh, indictment and, and the state of um, the, the sort of the, the recruitment process and um, perhaps some unconscious bias that, that still exists in our industry. Um, but on a positive note, we recognize this and thought, what on earth can we do? What can we change to ensure that we don't miss the next Fred Cook, the next uh, great leader, the next great talent? Um, and from that, that kernel, the, the unturnship was born. Um, so we are very deliberately looking for candidates who are unconventional. Um, we are looking um, very hard in um, different places. We're looking for passive um, candidates who perhaps have never heard of PR or communications or never considered the creative industries. And we work with partners like Sarah Stimson and the Taylor Bennett Foundation to, to, uh, in this in endeavor. And the offer itself is um, turning the traditional unturnship on its head. So um, we're a rewarding adventure rather than admin. You will not be attached to the, the photocopier, uh, quite, quite the contrary. 
we want you to pitch us um, a life adventure, uh, a, a great adventure idea, um, and we will support and fund this great adventure for six to eight weeks, sending you off uh, around the country, around the continent, or even around the world to, uh, to, to see out this, this pitch, this creative idea with the um, ethos, uh, the, the, the key driver being that for the individual, this is a fantastic opportunity for a young person to, uh, to do something creative, to see uh, some of the world, to broaden their horizons and to, um, to really get some interesting life experience. And then um, whilst they're, they're in touch, they're sharing content, they're sharing their ideas whilst they're on their adventure, they then come back to the office for the marginally more conventional part of the, uh, the program but they then come back for, for a three-month placement with us. Um, and the idea being that we as a business then benefit from the life adventure that they've embarked on rather than having a sort of cookie-cutter approach to recruitment where, you know, clearly no disrespect to, to the academic routes, but you're perhaps more likely to get um, uh, a less unconventional individual with more conventional experience if you've come through a traditional academic process and straight into a, uh, an office-based um, internship. So that's the, the theory, um, that's the, the process, and I'm delighted to say that we have our second London Unturn who is currently out and about um, in, uh, in the world embarking on his adventure right now. Oh, brilliant. I was uh, reading his blog and it sounds like he's having a great time traveling around Scandinavia and visiting the world's happiest countries. Um, yeah. Exactly. Very yeah. jealous. And I liked the <laughs> sound of the first one as well, um, where the the lady traveled around without social media around the, um, South America for uh, a couple of months, just uh, experiencing what it was like not to live with a smartphone. The digital detox, exactly. Oh, brilliant. And so is it just two that you've done so far in London? It's two that we've done so far in London. Um, we're on our second or third in the US, um, and there are other markets, including China, um, who've also uh, embarked on this program. So we probably have somewhere between um, six and ten uh, around the world, um, but many, many more um, interns, uh, just um, a, a slightly lower number of, of, of unturns but uh, the program is in its infancy and I look forward to there being many many more um, who can benefit from uh, from the, the, the progressive approach to, to internships in the coming months and years. No definitely so what is it you look for then from an unturn in terms of an application how would um, what's the application process like for applying? So um, we are very careful not to get hung up on, um, you know, people's ages, people's academic backgrounds, people's work experience, people's um, socio-economic or, or ethnic um, backgrounds at all. It's all very, very much centered on the, the um, creative um, potential that they demonstrate. We're also not looking for the, the finished article. And I'm massively, massively empathetic to um, young people or anybody trying to, to enter our industry, especially with um, some of the, you know, sort of top agencies that are very, very competitive. Um, you almost have to have a list of internships as long as your arm mm. in order to, to secure another internship, which yeah. is incredibly frustrating. But very deliberately here. Um, you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have experience of our industry. You just have to have a huge, huge passion and potential to do something different. You have to have flair and um, gumption, and you have to have a really good idea. Um, so the first stage is simply through any form of uh, multimedia. Uh, very often it's a short video, uh, a short film uh, or an animation or what have you to pitch us that kernel of your idea. And again, we're not expecting it to be a, a polished, finished article that we might sell to a client, but it's that raw potential and, and passion that we're looking for. Um, and then we um, we select, um, it's about 10 uh, sort of uh, shortlisted videos um, that the senior team um, look at here. And then we invite three um, lucky individuals in um, for uh, an assessment day. Um, we give them a GoPro camera 
um, a small amount of money and we set them loose on the streets of London with a very specific challenge. But we're also kind of looking to test the level of um, initiative and um, proactivity that these individuals might possess. So we send them off into London with the GoPro uh, for, for a couple of hours. They come back um, and they uh, put, put a little bit of production uh, onto their content. And then, and this is a real challenge for, for young people, um, they have to present back their content and their ideas to the entire agency, so in a company meeting. Um, and then the company as a whole gets to vote for the successful candidate. Oh, brilliant. Wow, that sounds uh, that yeah. sounds good fun. So, how often um, do you run the internship uh, a year? Uh, once a year. Um, so, as we've yes yeah, just discussed, uh, Leslie is off on his adventure at the moment. So, um, he will be back with us in the office in in a matter of weeks, and then um, in the sort of new year springtime, we'll begin the process again for for the next cycle. Um, but what I do want to stress, I guess, um, and this applies to any of our programs and, and initiatives, we come across such wonderful, varied, rich talent um, that whilst there is only sadly one London unturn a year, it gives us the opportunity to engage with um, so many brilliant and interesting people that, um, you know, we have hired permanently people that um, were runners up uh, in the unturnship. Um, or people that apply for one role we keep in touch with and um, are very likely to, to find another route into the agency. So um, we're very good at keeping in touch and keeping an open mind uh, and, and playing the long game when it comes to recruitment, which is, I think, a key tip and a key message um, for anybody out there trying to, to break into this industry. Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely good to hear that, you know, um, if you put your, put your efforts and your attention and passion into applying for the internship, it's not all wasted if you, you know, if you don't get the, uh, the big, the big trip. No, so, absolutely not. So thinking then about your other, um, internship program, the, the Bright Young Things, uh, internships, yes. um, how many people do you take a year for this and how often, uh, do you run it? Is it just once a year or twice a year in terms of, um, entrance? No, we run um, three cycles a year. We've um, we've changed, we've tinkered, we've experimented over the last four or five years with the format, and we've settled on um, three annual cycles of uh, four months. And we typically take between three and five um, interns with each cycle, and um, the 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 three um, intakes run um, from uh, January to the end of April, May till the end of August, and then um, September to the end of the year. Um, all details and, and timings and so on are advertised on, on our UK website. Um, but yes, we, we take a, a mixture of people across the business, and this is really the best way to, to get a, a permanent entry level opportunity with the agency. Um, because in those four months, we really um, try out, test out the individuals, give them exposure both to um, some very structured learning and development, um, but really to try and expose them to a mixture of, um, you know, a mixed client portfolio so they get a proper understanding of what life might be um, might be like in a permanent position. Um, we take most of our graduates um, and entry level roles through through this program. Um, sadly, we don't tend to have permanent roles for all of them, but we tend to hire um, at least half for, through every cycle. Um, and as I suggested, we're very good at keeping in touch with the people that that make a strong impression with us, and also setting people up for success elsewhere. We are really, really happy to, to make recommendations um, and uh, to put them in touch with um, with other contacts in the industry to give them the best start possible. Excellent. And listeners, everything uh, that we've discussed today, so all the links that uh, Jane's mentioned, will be available in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash golin. And Jane, unlike many other internships um, in the industry, this is a completely paid internship and also you have a really innovative um, little scheme, Golin B and B. Do you maybe want to touch upon this and what this involves and how it helps people who go through your internship program? Absolutely, yes. Um, so our program has been paid um, for as long as I can remember. Um, feel very, very strongly about that. Um, we currently just have an office in London, so we are also very cognizant of the exorbitant living costs in in London as a city. Yep. Um, 
And this is particularly true for people interning. And I, I think I've already referenced in our, our conversation that in order to land a permanent position with a really decent agency, you probably have to have a couple of internships under your belt to demonstrate experience and commitment. Um, so that makes it really, really hard. If you don't come from London, you don't have um, accommodation, uh, free accommodation that you can lean on. How on earth can you commit yourself to an internship um, without, you know, a, a permanent contract or salary in such an expensive city? Um, and this is a real concern to us because we don't want our talent pool to be um, reduced or, or um, you know, to be um, tailored according to those that have the means or they're geographically based around here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, with that very, very much front of mind, um, back in January, we were delighted to launch um, Golan B&B, which is, um, overlays our existing Bright Young Things uh, intern program. But it's basically for the first month of your four-month placement with us, um, we will fund your accommodation. We will put you up in a Golan um, flat for those uh, who are interested. And then um, on the back of that, we will also give you um, a loan for uh, further accommodation. And we provide you with um, buddies in the office. We have a third party partner who also provides you with um, kind of counsel and advice about which uh, areas of London might be suitable for you to live in, how you go about getting a utility um, provider, where you can uh, register with a doctor and all those sorts of, um, you know, really important um, but quite bemusing life decisions when you're moving to a, a different um, city to set you up for success and hopefully make life as pain-free as possible so you can concentrate on uh, on your internship and, and getting a good start to your career. Excellent. No, that sounds uh, that sounds brilliant. So let me just delve in then into the application process for the Bright Young Things internships. Um, how do you uh, how do people apply for this? What um, what sort of applications uh, do you look for? So um, again, I know we will be providing the links, but the Join Us page um, of of the UK website um, is is kept very up to date. And when applications open for the Bright Young Things, um, that is certainly your best source of, of information. Um, we very often, again, um, trying to, to make sure that we are stepping away from any prejudice, prejudices uh, whatsoever, we are very much focused as ever on the impact and the idea and the individual uh, rather than any of the, um, you know, um, the, the bits and pieces in the background and so on, which is of no interest to us whatsoever. We look for um, quite often video applications or it might be, uh, you know, as short as a tweet uh, or a short blog, just to get an idea of the potential, um, the energy and, and the creativity of the individual at the first stage. Um, and then we would typically have a short telephone um, conversation to find out a little bit more, to make sure the individuals are available uh, when and where we need them. Um, and then we would take you through to um, an assessment day, which actually um, for the next intake happened this morning. Oh, um, cool. And that would be a mixture of, um, you know, straightforward um, interviews with a couple of members of the team, um, some group exercises where you'd get to, to tackle a sort of stripped back sample client brief, uh, work as a team and then present back to uh, to, to the wider community. Um, and uh, a writing test, which, uh, again, is typically a, a sort of short blog piece piece, excuse me, that you get to do under under timed conditions. Um, and then, um, yeah, we uh, we make the decision and feedback to people really, really quickly. Um, and as I say, once again, we're good at keeping in touch with um, with people that, that really make a mark. Mm. So are there any creative applications that have stood out in your in your mind from uh, the people have done recently? Um the one that really stands out in my mind, actually, which um, came to me personally uh, uh, in, in recent times, was a video, as we'd requested uh, as part of the application process. But the candidate had basically, um, the course of the video was his journey from his home to the Golan office, um, which was narrated appropriately according to the content that we'd asked. Um, but in the video, you could see that he was making a delivery of some description. And then actually, when I came into the office uh, on that Monday, lo and behold, there was a parcel for me, which um, was a lovely, uh, lighthearted, creative parcel. 
um, with the sort of little uh, office essentials like um, uh, sort of headache tablets and tea and biscuits that might make one's week uh, go uh, just that little bit easier. So it was very lighthearted, um, but it all fit together very nicely and showed some thought and creativity. Yeah, excellent. They put the effort in, they put the attention to detail in, and um, that sounds like it was executed perfectly. Exactly, and made me smile, which uh, which is always good. Uh, and did they get the job? Um, they did get the internship, absolutely. And I know where he is now and what he's doing, and he's very successful, and we're still in touch. Excellent. Oh, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> so thinking then about the next stage, you mentioned uh, interviews. What can candidates do to stand out at this stage? I would, uh, giving sort of relatively generic advice, not, not particular to Golin, I always advise that people spend enough time doing their research that they understand the personality, the tone and the culture of the organization that they're targeting and that they match their style at interview to, to that um, organization. Now, clearly, I'm not advocating that um, you change yourself. And in fact, if in, in the course of your research, you discover that there is quite a mismatch then I think that's probably a discovery in itself. Maybe this opportunity is not for you. Um, but I absolutely expect to see the personality of the individual, um, but I, it, I don't expect them to go so far as to, to stand out for the wrong reasons. Um, so do your homework. Um, I think a, uh, just the right amount of flattery about the organization and some, and some of its work um, will really get the interviewer's attention. Um, and then take the same uh, care with, with your own key messages. Think about how you can sell yourself um, and how you can do it credibly. So um, what's different about yourself? And then back that up with some examples um, to prove your point, um, be it previous work experience, be it something from in the academic arena, or be it um, you know, observations that you've made about um, what, what's good in the marketing arena or what's bad in the marketing arena. And flipping that on its head then, what um, what are your bugbears with um, uh, applications where, uh, where people tend to let themselves down? Um, I'm afraid it's really obvious, basic things that, that tend to drive me mad. Um, I still receive quite a lot of applications that have um, typos or really uh, sort of humdinger of uh, formatting errors, which really great when you're seeing, yeah. um, you know, tens of applications and especially speculative applications uh, a day or a week. Um, and we love to have uh, international applications and people speak multiple languages, but just take that extra care perhaps to run your content past a native speaker before you send it on. Um, and my other bugbear, I think, is um, in the tone that sometimes um, speculative applications are, are, are made with. Um, so, um, for example, somebody telling you the dates that they might be available for work experience. Now, I'm all for confidence and selling yourself, but perhaps that might be slightly over, overstepping the confidence mark into uh, entitlement and might be a turn off from the uh, the person receiving that particular message. So just just um, make sure that you're tipping the scales of confidence um, just at the appropriate level. Uh, that's great advice. And um, I echo your first point. It is amazing just how, you know, people just don't even bother pressing F7 and doing a spell check of uh, before oh. they'll send something off. And um, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, yeah, it just astounds me sometimes. But um, yeah. So great advice. I guess actually, um, just to, to build on that, my third point would be, and I empathise, it's a it can be a really tough um, time when you're you're searching for a, for a role, and also if you're if you're still quite young, you're still figuring out exactly um, which which career path you're going to take. Um, whilst I empathise with that, I would expect somebody's approach to me to be quite tailored and to be quite committed. So clearly make sure that you have cut and pasted and you're not including another agency um, <laughs> name, for example. That happens quite quite often. Um, but yes, you're taking just enough time to uh, personalize the approach. Um, as I said before, perhaps reference some of our recent work or, or, or recent um, program 
just to get our attention with that little bit of flattery. Yeah, I've seen that when, uh, when I was helping with the graduate recruitment for a, a management consulting company where people would uh, just cut and paste the previous application and there'd be the name of a different company in one of the questions. You just think, oh dear, it's not going to go well. <laughs> no. <laughs> So thinking then about the group exercises, any advice or top tips for how people can um, perform in these? Yes. Um, we don't expect everybody to be a natural born leader or to be, um, you know, as accomplished a public speaker as Barack Obama, for example. But what we are expecting to see is people participating. Um, we're expecting to see you work collaboratively and positively together. So, yes, it's competitive, but, um, you know, we, it's more important that we see that you're able to work collaboratively and in a, in a team rather than to, to rise to the top. So um, keep an eye on all of the, uh, the, you know, the logistics. Make sure you've read the brief and you're actually doing what you've been asked. Make sure that you're doing it in, you know, somebody's um, watching the time, for example, all of those seemingly obvious um, watch outs. Um, and then. Again, in, in the presentation, what we see back, we want to see it balanced. There's no prizes for somebody who dominates um, because actually that's no use to us in, in the day-to-day -day work. Uh, it would be far more compelling to see somebody who takes the time to bring out the talents of everybody on the team yep. uh, rather than rides roughshod over them. Um, and again, we don't necessarily expect to see people with um, deep, deep understanding of the subtleties of our industry, but people who understand the differences perhaps between PR and advertising, uh, for example, um, that give just enough of an indication that they know what they're getting into and there's a commitment to, to our, our, our part of the, um, the marketing mix. Uh, I think people have seen too many episodes of The Apprentice and uh, you know, they have to adopt, you know, the, the alpha the alpha role in oh. the group exercise, you know, so, mm. as opposed to... Woe well betide them. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to, you know, realising that it actually it's not a competition and if they can make other people perform better, then they'll be, you know, performing better themselves and, you know, they'll make a yep. better impression that way. And some people, uh, you know, sometimes people that that say less actually say... Um, very, very insightful, um, you know, d deliver some really cutting um, insight that, that um, totally tramples over those who, who shout the loudest. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So moving then on to uh, the sort of applying um, post-university. So you mentioned that often the internships then lead to uh, full-time offers. Uh, do you recommend that everybody who's applying um, goes through the internship route or is there a specific uh, you know, graduate application track? So um, for us, the, the graduate application track is, is the internship. Okay. Um, and that is the most fruitful um, route to a permanent position for, for graduates. Um, we also offer apprenticeships, but um, clearly for, for this audience, that's probably less relevant. So um, for many years, we have um, focused our graduate recruitment um, on, um, on this channel. And um, because our business is so fast moving and um, pretty large in the UK, uh, well, globally, as, as we've already established, we found it far more effective um, not to plan for one big graduate intake per calendar year, for example. Mm -hmm. So we know that we've got, um, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 really bright young things coming through our doors on an annual basis. Plus, we're staying in touch with those who've, who've come through our doors um, previously. So for the, um, you know, 10, 15 positions we might have annually, uh, I'm certainly speaking for the London office, um, then um, that is certainly the the, um, the most appropriate and the strongest route for for individuals to, to land themselves with a permanent role at at Golan. Yep. And in terms of uh, degrees in universities, are you pretty agnostic in terms of what people have studied? Yes, we are. We're really open minded. And um, if I kind of look around the office at the disciplines and the skill sets and the specialisms that we have, we are so diverse as a company and as an industry. Um, you know, we have um, videographers, we have insight and planners, we have um, social media uh, community managers. We, we require great breadth of, um, of skill sets. 
and therefore um, the the degrees that that we draw on are equally uh, rich and varied. So we are very very happy to have um, you know people with PR degrees or PR masters. Um, equally happy to have um, somebody with an engineering background, for example. Mm, excellent. And we touched upon it uh, just before we started recording. Um, Golden offers some brilliant perks, uh, such as <laughs> unlimited holidays and uh, the ability to work from anywhere. Do you maybe want to just touch upon these, uh, Jane, for a second? Sure, yes. Um, we relaunched our, our global benefits package just over a year ago under the um, Lifetime umbrella. Um, and it includes um, all of the uh, sort of very grown up hard uh, benefits like um, how access to healthcare and uh, pension contributions and so on that you would expect. Um, but it also includes slightly more imaginative and unusual um, perks like the, the paid unlimited leave. Um, and one of my personal favorites is the £50 a month um, allowance. Um, that you can spend any which way you like as long as it contributes to your mental or physical health and well-being. So that could be um, mindfulness, it could be horse riding, it could be massage, it could be um, you know training to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, whatever it is, if it contributes to your well-being, um, then that's included in the, in the package. Oh, brilliant. Now that sounds uh, that sounds good. And yeah, the, uh, the unlimited holidays does sound... Uh... Does sound a brilliant perk, especially as we're recording this in a cold and wet London. It'd be good to uh, be able to <laughs> get away. Very true, very true. Only me. Before we get to the final questions, listeners, don't forget that you can fast track your process of finding the perfect graduate job by heading to the National Graduate Recruitment Exhibitions on the 13th and 14th of October at Olympia in London and on the 3rd and 4th of November at the NEC in Birmingham. You'll be able to meet the UK's leading graduate employers face-to-face and discover what opportunities they have to offer, how to apply, and what will make you stand out from the crowd. So get your diary out now and pencil in the National Graduate Recruitment Exhibitions on the 13th and 14th of October at Olympia in London and on the 3rd and 4th of November at the NEC in Birmingham. Get your free ticket now at gradjobs.co.uk. That's gradjobs.co.uk. Now on with the show. Unfortunately, Jane, time is running away with us. So maybe one final question before we move on to our weekly staple questions. What um, advice would you give to someone who might be in two minds about whether to apply for an internship with Golan? Um, I would use our, our rallying cry, uh, you know, go all in, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Do your research, listen to your intuition. If um, you like the sort of work that we do, if you like the sort of culture and and some of the perks and um, the benefits that that we've just talked about, then follow your instincts and uh, why not? Um, Unless you slightly branch out of your comfort zone, um, then uh, life will be uh, considerably less interesting uh, and rewarding for you. So, um, yeah, give it a go. Oh, brilliant. That's uh, that's great advice to finish on. And as I mentioned before, you can check out a full transcript of the interview and all of the links to be discussed at www.graduatejobpodcast.com slash golin, which is G-O-L-I-N. Jane, moving on then to the weekly staple questions. So first up, what one book would you recommend that listeners should read? I would recommend... Um... The wonderful uh, Danny Rogers at the helm of uh, PR Week and, and Brand Republic, um, a book he wrote um, in the last couple of years called Campaigns That Shook the World. And um, sure that you know ca- campaigns change uh, on a regular basis, but this is a really great collection of some of the most significant and greatest campaigns in our industry of the last four decades things that have really shaped the course of um, modern culture and and our industry. Ah, excellent. That's uh, one I'll have to check out. And listeners, that's probably a good one to read before you go for your Golan internship so you can name drop uh, that with Jane <laughs> to, uh, to stand out. And next question, Jane, which website would you point people to? I'm afraid, James, I'm going to have to recommend uh, one of our own websites. It's nothing that I personally put together, so I don't feel too bad but um inspiration weekly so that's inspirationweekly.co.uk um is a website that we have um been putting together adding to um curating for for a couple of years now and it's a wonderful resource of 
actually, I guess, building on um, Danny Rogers' book, um, the most creative current campaigns from the world of, of marketing and PR. Um, some of them are absolute humdingers and are in there because um, they don't tick all the boxes. Um, some of those are the sorts of campaigns that you'd wish you'd, you'd been part of, um, but all of them should inform and entertain in some way. And perhaps if you're at a bit of a creative block, um, having a bit of a rife through Inspiration Weekly uh, might might help you move forward. Oh, brilliant. And I will link to that in the show notes. That's one I will definitely check out. And finally, Jane, what one tip would you give listeners so they can help their job search today? Whilst I empathize with the challenge of uh, job search, I would suggest that you tailor your approach that you take just enough time to make sure that your approach is individualized and will um, hit a sweet spot um, at the other end um, and give you the desired outcome. That's brilliant advice. It's always better to focus on three companies to apply to properly than 10 companies to do a cut and paste scattergun approach to. You'll, uh, You'll get better results from those three than you would from the 10. Absolutely. Jane, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. What's the best way that people can get in touch with you and Golan? Um, so you can find me and us um, via the Join Us page on our website. I'm also pretty prolific on LinkedIn, so find me on LinkedIn um, as, a, as a good secondary way to uh, connect with me and, and the agency. Super. Thank you so much for appearing on the Graduate Job Podcast today. Thank you very, very much for having us. Many thanks to Jane for her insight and time today. You've got to admit, Golin sounds like a pretty cool place to work. Unlimited holiday, free cash to spend each month on your well-being, and the internship. I'm tempted to apply for that one myself. If this has piqued your interest, make sure you apply. As Jane said, they're agnostic to whether you've got a degree, the type of degree it is if you've got one, your age, race, sex, location, whatever it is. Follow her advice and... Put your time into your application and go all in. Make sure you check out the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash golin, where there is a full transcript and links to everything we have mentioned today. So there you go. That is it for this week. If you want to support the show, you can do by clicking on our Amazon links over in the show notes and buying some books. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps to keep the lights running on the podcast. Also, a big thanks to Tony, who's left us a five-star review from New Zealand on iTunes saying, love the show. It's proving a big help to my job search. Five stars. Cheers, Tony. And listeners, if you haven't left a review, you know what to do. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. But more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.